Okay, this is our day 13 uh, update, Reco day 13 of recovery. I think our last one was uh, day 10. We've done some short videos in between, uh, but this is the, the, the first real update. Uh, first thing I wanna do is thank uh, Corey and Aquarium Co-op uh, they gave us a great boost early in this. Uh, uh, one of the big reasons we have the number of subscribers we have now is because uh, Corey uh, encouraged them. And so we have a lot of visitors from Aquarium Co-op. Uh, also, uh, uh, Corey did a really nice video over a year ago, I guess, because it was pre-COVID about our system. And Carl's going to put a link in the... Uh, in this video to that video, uh, uh, Corey has offered to uh, donate some of the revenue from that, that video uh, to us. We really, really appreciate that. Uh, and, this, and we'd like to drive some revenue back toward, uh, toward Corey. Uh, let's see, what else? Uh, oh, uh, let's talk about water chemistry. We did a full set of chemistry this morning. Uh, the, we'll start with ammonia. Uh, both greenhouse one and two ammonia is approaching, is just about zero. Uh, can barely uh, tell that it's above zero. Uh, that, was, that was down from uh, uh, almost two weeks ago at, at one part per million, which is pretty uh, toxic to fish, especially at our pH. Fortunately, our uh, water temperature was low and that helped. Uh, reduce toxicity of the ammonia. Our plant filters, uh, hornwort, everything, you can go back and look at other uh, videos to see a uh, discussion of, of uh, our plant filtration. Uh, they've kicked in with the warmer temperatures and, and more sunlight. We had a couple weeks during the storm, leading up to the storm with no sunlight. So we uh, uh, the plant filters have kicked back in. We also checked, because people were asking, we checked uh, nitrites and nitrates. Nitrite is zero in both greenhouses. Uh, nitrate, greenhouse one, is uh, between 10 and five parts per million, which isn't a problem. And in greenhouse two, between uh, 40 and 30, 40 and 20, yeah, uh, parts per million. Uh, also uh, sublethal, uh, not much of a problem that'll come down and the reason that comes down is one i'm convinced our plants suck ammonia out directly they don't wait for it to get broken down to nitrate uh, to take it out uh, secondly we have uh, uh, huge populations of back of uh, nitrosomus and uh, uh, nitro nitrobacter uh, nitrobacter uh, bacteria that uh, that process uh, ammonia uh, and that's primarily in the mom at the bottom of the shrimp net and that mom is loaded with uh, bacteria also loaded with paramecium uh, and cyclops that the fish graze on uh, this is a uh, cichlid bat so there aren't very many scuds in there although there will be some scuds the cichlids eat them. Uh, probably see some scuds moving around. Yeah, there's uh, scuds moving around in the uh, the plant here. So you see that they're able to maintain populations, but nothing like they do in our vats where we breed them. So today we're going to talk about uh, how we produce scuds. I'll give some tips to hobbyists on how they might be able to do it. Uh, we currently are raising scuds in about a dozen vats in this greenhouse, greenhouse one. W once we rebuild greenhouse three, we'll move our scud production to there. Oso, come over here. Oso's walking around looking for fish to eat. Uh, he likes uh, expensive sushi. And uh, he got used to getting a bunch of it. <laughs> now, now pickings are slim. Okay, so these first four vats in this row are scud vats, and we skip one, this is a fish. Uh, and these are a couple more, then there are a couple more down there. You'll note that 
Uh, we're just barely trickling water in to these. The scuds don't require much aeration, but they do well with some trickled water. Also, that water is delivering some food to them, uh, and it's uh, basically turning over the vat. Uh, more duckweed than we like in there right now, uh, but we haven't been discouraging duckweed uh, because it, it is great at pulling out ammonia too. Uh, normally, uh, the duckweed overflows a little bit out of the system. Uh, there are some, some of our cichlids eat duckweed, uh, especially some of, some of the sump fish. Uh, I have this bucket of, uh, Carl's uh, showing the current air temperature in here. <laughs> this is a bucket of hornwort I uh, just harvested to feed to the scuds. That's a primary food for them. It's a you know, five gallon bucket full. Uh, we generate quite a few of those a day. They normally go to our uh, worm beds and uh, compost piles. Uh, so what we're going to do uh, now is show how we harvest the scuds. We're going to do a, uh, this is an internal order. I'm going to be doing 12,000 uh, scuds going out this afternoon, but I, they'll go to FedEx and I want to do those late afternoon so that they're not uh, packed. They'll Hit, hit the customer that way in less than 24 hours. Uh, we deliver them to FedEx in Victoria, Texas, about uh, 20 some odd miles from here. Uh, but this will be an internal order. Uh, Carl's, uh, one of our grand brats, uh, has axolotls and they love scuds. Uh, so we're going to be. Uh, uh, collecting scuds for those. We're also growing a few. Uh, her axolotls have been reproducing, so we're, we're uh, growing some little ones up, and they love the scuds too. Uh, so this will be an internal order. We're going to get a thousand of them, and we're going to laboriously count them. One, two, three. Not really. I'll show you what we do. Uh, uh, an order of a thousand uh, is most assuredly more than a thousand scuds. I'm just going to start with this vat uh, and see, first thing I'm going to do, well, I, let's see, there's a net down there. I'm going to pull the hornwort out. And see, this hornwort's pretty ratty. That's because the scuds are eating it. You see how chewed up it is. Also, there's quite a bit less in there than we usually have in there. And I'll replenish uh, the hornwort for the scuds. So, first thing I'm going to do is get a couple gallons of water, make sure I didn't get a fish in there, move this out of the way, go get a big net. I use two nets. I use this uh, large net to stir things up because the scuds are burrowed into the mom and the bottom, and, and I'm trying to get them in the water column so I can collect them. And then I'll use uh, a coarse fish net uh, to uh, capture sellable size scuds. So the first thing I do, I've moved the plant out, got it out of the way mostly. I'm going to just stir this up and you can see quite a bit of gunk you can tell on my hand. Uh, see, there's a, a guppy. Throw it in at 300. We try not to have guppies in there, but what happens is when I harvest uh, corn work uh, from the 300 gallon breeder vats, there are guppies in those, and sometimes guppies get stuck in the in the wet horn work as long as they're not reproducing in there to cut down. Okay, I've stirred this up. Let's see if this vat has enough to really harvest. You, Swirl with this net. A lot of uh, duckweed here. Uh, tell you what, let me get, uh, Susie, you want to toss me a pair of radiant glasses? Right there. One problem with being 70 years old is you have to have reader glasses. Another problem with them in the greenhouse is they're always fogged up. Okay. There are a fair number in there. Let's see if I can get some without all that duckweed so we can. Can see them. Nope. 
you can see you can see some in there there's probably at least a hundred in there but let's go to a vat that has less duckweed if we can find one like I said we haven't been inhibiting it nope <laughs> So we're just gonna deal with the duckweed. I'll show you how we get rid of it later. Uh, I think what I'll do is scoop a bunch of it out right now so that we don't have to deal with as much. Okay, let's stir this up again. They go down it, they come out of the water column pretty quickly, so. Okay, let's see if we get less duckweed. Okay, you can see. I'm going to count that as a hundred. Uh, Hold them still for a minute so I can see them crawling. There are at least a hundred scuds in there. So that's one hundred. See a whole bunch of them there. That's probably a couple hundred there. Okay, we'll call that about 500 total now. That's easily another couple hundred, so 700. We'll call that 800. It's 900. And we'll call that 1,000. Okay. Now then, we're going to... I think I'll just give them new hornwort. A bunch of it since they look like they weren't getting enough. And this is nice healthy hornwort. They'll chew it down to stubs in a few days. Okay, uh, now we're going, I'm going to do the next step in, in this order uh, and then we'll talk about how a hobbyist might raise these. Uh, what I'm going to do, I want to get rid of the duckweed. Uh, it's incredibly valuable stuff, but some people don't like it. So, <laughs> so I try not to ship too much of it. Uh, another thing to consider is this is an ecosystem. There's stuff in here that we haven't put in here. For example, uh, a lot of times we'll find damselfly larvae, nymphs. Uh, we'll find... Uh, uh, especially down in the mom, we'll find in the scud bats, not so much in the fish bats because the fish eat them, we find uh, planaria. Uh, what's that? Right there. Okay, um, I'm going to let that settle a little bit and I'll come back and, and net the scuds will go down. I'll net the duckweed out. Uh, so let's talk about how a hobbyist might do this. Uh, scuds can survive outside as long as uh, the water doesn't freeze solid, but they don't reproduce at cold temperatures. So uh, what I recommend people do is a 20-gallon trash can is a good uh, culture container. Uh, I recommend that there's, uh, they drop an air stone in, not an air stone, an air line, a bare one. Let's see if I have one around here. We usually don't. We did away with air lines, but some of them I still have here. Uh, let's see if I show it. Yeah, this, the, that's just uh, a couple washers and a nut. Uh, if you get the right size nut, it fits right on the air line. And that'll hold it down. And an open air line with a slow bubble is perfect for scuds. They don't like a lot of current. Uh, so that provides an adequate aeration. Then uh, we're changing water all the time and it's running through our plant filter. I recommend 
a partial water change maybe uh, once every couple of weeks, maybe a 50%. Uh, I like keeping hornwort in with them. It's a good food. And in fact, it's the only food they really need. Uh, uh, if you're going to do hornwort, you want some light and you're going to want to grow the horn hornwort someplace else because the scuds are going to eat it to death if you have a good population. If you have a small population, uh, you can get away with, uh, uh, with it. As you can see, we saw scuds in uh, the hornwort in this vat and, and they're, not, they're not chewing it up. They eat the hornwort when, uh, when they're crowded and there's nothing else uh, left to eat. Uh, so a 20 gallon trash can, by the way, when you, if you're going to get a new trash can, rinse it out several times. The new ones have uh, uh, formaldehyde leaching out and it will kill the scuds. Uh, so uh, really a good aged one would be better. Uh, also, you go to tractor supply or something and buy some 40-gallon uh, 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 livestock tubs. Those are good. I'd rinse them out once or twice. So those are good because they have more surface area. They're, they're short and, uh, and long, have more surface area. Uh, you can feed the scuds a cheap fish food. You can feed them leaves. Again, I like hornwort. Uh, we feed our fish pretty much exclusively uh, Perina Aquamax foods. And uh, when I'm feeding the fish, I usually drop a couple uh, pellets of Aquamax 500 in each one of the scud vats and, and they chew it up. It's cheap, a bag, a 50 pound bag is around $70. Uh, the, it's 42% protein. The other, uh, uh, ones we use are Ocmax 100, 200, 300, and those are different sizes of, of uh, sinking foods uh, that the fish really like. Uh, little fish get the 100, medium-sized fish 200, big fish 300, and uh, it's a 50% protein food. Uh, keep in mind that that's a product that Perina sells to fish farms for uh, producing fish that we eat. So to a certain extent, if you've ever bought a uh, farm-raised tilapia or catfish, uh, you've eaten Perina foods uh, uh, because those fish, uh, uh, that's pretty much their exclusive diet. Uh, the, so again, uh, a good container, like I say, a, a trash can will work, but I like the 40-gallon the, the, uh, livestock uh, troughs from Tractor Supply. Probably any, any local uh, uh, feed store will have them. Also any local feed store will, that's a Perina dealer will have the Perina foods. Uh, I highly recommend it. This is Maya by the way. She's looking to see if I have any fish for her to eat. She won't stay in here very long because it's kind of warm for a German Shepherd in here since it's what uh, air temperatures now a hundred and almost fifteen. Okay, so uh, get a container, put in a bunch of hornwort, maybe do some supplemental feeding, dump your culture in, light aeration with big bubbles, not small bubbles, and uh, maybe a 50% water change every week or so and you should be able to grow all the scuds you want. As Carl, who's behind the camera, pointed out, uh, get three scuds, put them in an aquarium, and you're going to have a lot of scuds later. They, uh, they colonize filters, uh, uh, the gravel, under rocks, any place they can get away from the fish. Uh, we sell a lot of scuds to aquaponics people, and what, uh, uh, they find that the scuds chew up the the debris uh, plant fragments and stuff in in their sumps and keep the sumps clean uh, we do warn them and the ones that who haven't taken this uh, warning to heart we warn them that if you don't harvest the scuds and feed them to your fish and in aquaponics you're doing you're using fish and plants together the plants are being fed from fish waste and the fish are being fed uh, well, usually commercial foods, but uh, if you don't harvest them, they're going to overpopulate, and they'll actually eat the roots off your your lettuce and you know the uh, other you know, crops that you're growing. 
And uh, I've had a couple people say, yeah, <laughs> uh, we didn't harvest them and they, all of a sudden our plants were wilting and we pulled them up and there were no roots. So they, I advise them to do some heavy harvesting. You, uh, it's properly managed. Uh, you'll never need more than one culture. Okay, so I'm going to clean the duckweed up if I can find a small net. Start doing that and show you how I clean these up to ship because there's quite a bit of uh, gunk in there. This is all the duckweed. I'm just going to dump that in the gutter. The gutter, the sump fish will take care of it. We used to have a bunch of uh, kissing grommies and they love this stuff. Uh, uh, but I thought about using kissing grommies in the vats for duckweed control, but it turns out they'll also eat little fish. They're pretty effective fry predators. So I'm going to keep talking while I let this duckweed settle, settle up. And once I have most of the duckweed out, uh, by the way, um, I joke about this, but you know, it's probably serious. Uh, if you want to get rid of a weed, a plant, or anything, find a commercial use for it and try to raise it, and it will immediately quit growing. I'm doing this with duckweed. I'm, uh, uh, prior to this storm, I was uh, dealing with a lab. I want to uh, them, them tell me what oils are in duckweed. Uh, duckweed, unlike most floating plants, doesn't float because it has air trapped in it. It floats because it has oils that are lighter than water. And so I want to see what oils are in it to see if we can uh, uh, maybe make biodiesel or something out of it. They're making biodiesel now out of algae, but that requires single cell algae. That requires huge water pumps to pump water through filters to collect it. With duckweed, you just set up a boom and, and a net and scoop it off the top. Uh, be really easy. So uh, once we get kind of th pass through this, I'm uh, going to collect some duckweed, extract the oils, and send it off to get it analyzed so I know how much. Uh, whether there are any commercial, viable uh, commercial oils in there. If there are, I'll build a business plan around it and the duckweed will suddenly develop some major uh, uh, pandemic of its own and di all die off and we won't be able to raise it. So that, which will be a, you know, that'll be a win as well. So it's kind of a win-win situation for me. If, it, if it's vi commercially viable and lives, I, I can make some money off of it. If it's a... Uh, uh, commercially viable and dies, then at least I'm rid of it. By the way, because this is a big recirculating system, and I forget which day we talked about recirculation and, and how our systems work, but you might want to go back through the videos and, and sit and find that. Uh, once something's established in here, if it likes it, we can't get rid of it. We have uh, breeding populations of two uh, tree frogs, squirrel tree frogs and green tree frogs. And in fact, at night it's deafening in here when they're singing. We have two species of snakes that uh, uh, are not as common as they once were. We used to have a lot of them, but uh, after Harvey, uh, the raccoons were able to get in and we had a raccoon population explosion and they apparently love to eat snakes. But we have Texas ribbon snakes and uh, diamondback water snakes that do really well in here. The reason they can reproduce in here is they, they're live bearers. They have live babies. They don't have to lay eggs in sand. Uh, there's really no place for other snakes and lizards to do that. Uh, we do get a lot of uh, uh, American chameleons, Anolis carolinensis in here, but I don't think they reproduce in here. I think they just come in. And we have some Mediterranean geckos. What was that? What? Uh, for a country girl, Stormy is cert certainly has a bunch of phobias, uh, snakes being one, uh, sm smells of dying stuff or dead stuff. <laughs> yeah, she claims that it's only fish that she can't stand, but uh, I guess next time we have a big mammal die or something, I'll let it get really ripe and have her move it and see if she can handle it. You heard me.
Yeah. Anyway, it looks like I've gotten an adequate amount of duckweed out of here. So what I'm going to do now, I think this was one of Susie's buckets. Uh, I want to use a little bit taller one. I'm going to take it. I'm going to take my, I want to rinse this net out. Get rid of the duckweed. Okay, I'm going to set this net up. I'm going to pour the contents through here and that captures the scuds and lets a lot of the mom go through. I'm going to kind of stir it up. You can see a lot of mom on the bottom. I'm going to pick it up and you can see easily a thousand. Here, hold it there for a minute so they can see them crawl. They want water. Okay, now I'm going to rinse them a little bit in here. Some of the smaller ones will go through and the, these fish can eat them. Uh, oops, you know what I did? I did not have my bag ready. This is a, one of our quarter bags. I'm going to put about a gallon, a little less than a gallon of water in it. This is a, sh a box we ship a thousand scuds in. Let's see, Susie's ripped off my stool that I use. I'm going to take it, get this ready. We ship them with uh, hornwort, so I'm going to put a little bit of, gives them something to crawl on and eat if they get hungry, and gives uh, the customer a start of hornwort. So I'm going to put that in. Okay, I've got the And I'm going to pour that back through, that bucket back through uh, to get some of them that went through. They're going to be relatively clean, so I don't need to clean them up. We can see. Okay, I'm going to clean that net off and scuds cling to the net, so I try to, I hate killing anything, so I don't want them drying out. So they can go in here and either get eaten by fish or, or survive. And this, I'm just going to, because there are scuds in there, I'm going to dump it back in there. I don't see any swimming around in this. This bucket probably has a few, so I'm going to rinse them out, put them in there. Uh, okay, so these are bagged. We're, we're going to go into the warehouse and... Um, put them in oxygen and box them up as if we we're going to ship them even though they're just going across the road but this okay get a rubber band ready squeeze the air out put the valve in there I ha have a new pistol grip nozzle I haven't gotten on here uh, so we just control it at the tank. Squeeze it out, change it again. Okay. That was oxygen I just put in there, if I didn't say that. Uh, scuds are pretty cold tolerant, so unless it's really, really cold where they're going, I don't do heat packs because you can actually, one problem is, is uh, when we ship from here, it's usually warm here, and then cold, if it's cold where we're going, uh, they're here in Texas a few hours before they go to Memphis to be, uh, to go out uh, to the local end, so we, uh, I'm reluctant to, to heat pack. Uh, unless we definitely have to. Uh, everybody, I'm shipping to Washington State, Tennessee, and I think Chicago today. Uh, 12,000 scuds, so 12 times as many as I did there. I taped the lids on just in case the bag leaks a little bit. Water doesn't seep out, and FedEx doesn't like it if it gets wet. Uh, we get these boxes and... and uh, 
uh, both the cardboard and the styrofoam from a company that used to be called Texfoam. Uh, in fact, that's what their logo says. They, they were bought by somebody else, and I don't know, I don't remember the first name. They're in Bastrop, and it's a, for us, it's a lot cheaper to uh, drive up to Bastrop, which is a couple hours away, and, and pick them up rather than pay the freight to have boxes come in from Florida or someplace else. And they have a wide range of, of box sizes. This is the size we use for a thousand. Uh, uh, scuds. If we're doing a t an order of 2,000, it goes in a box that's a little bit taller. Okay, so I am going to tape this box up. Okay, uh, anything else we were going to cover? I think that got it. Okay, you have to excuse the mess in here. We're uh, actually not fully recovered from Hurricane Harvey yet. <laughs> And uh, 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 things got fairly well disrupted uh, during, uh, uh, during this current storm. Uh, in fact, I've got these fittings that we're redoing some copper lines to get ready to install our new uh, generator, which would have been nice if we'd had it in before the storm, but we didn't. Uh, we probably would have run out of propane anyway, so. Okay, good fish keeping.